Last night we got a bunch of painting done and I'm trying to do a final coat at least against the centerboard trunk and the uh, bed logs and those floor timbers because I'm getting ready to start doing the additional framing that goes in on top of that for the actual floor that will be the floor of the cockpit. Um, but as I get ready to do that, the next thing I'm thinking to do, and this is at the advice of my friend Shep that's also building a haven right now, he said make sure and do the mast step before you do the floors. So what we're looking at here is the forward bulkhead and then down at the bottom is floor timber for frame 7 and right behind that is 8. And the mast step is supposed to be a 2 inch by 4 inch by 9 inch piece of oak that lays right in there from the forward bulkhead back and then the mass steps right right behind floor floor seven and comes straight up to a mast partner which is a piece of hardware that will affix in the center of this deck beam and then goes straight up obviously so I'm trying to figure out do I have a piece of two by four oak that's nine inches long and I'm looking for white oak of course so in an effort to try to figure this out, I'm looking at the plans here, and that is frame seven looking forward, and we're still on the uh, half inch equals a foot scale, which means that one eighth of an inch equals one inch. So if it's one eighth of an inch on here, and this is the mass step, this little tiny thing right here. Now I measured this and it is indeed two inches tall and four inches wide. And then on the other page, we can see down here, see there is the mast sticking up there. And then coming down, you see how the mast steps into that piece of oak and it's nine inches long. It was an inch and an eighth on the plan. So, I'm looking for a piece of oak. And I still have various pieces that I cut out of the tree. Now this would be what would look like a two by four. And in fact, it is even bigger than your standard dimensional lumber like you would get at the hardware store. But the sad fact is it's about three and three quarters wide and only about an inch and a half thick this way only about an inch and a half so I still have this chunk of wood that we cut out of the tree some time ago and I think I can get it out of there I've already measured it out so I'm I went about two and a quarter inches deep here and about four and a quarter wide and then I've marked down the sides here uh, to give me an idea what that's going to look like. And it's about 10 inches this way, so I know I have enough to get my 9 inches. Now, how do I get that chunk of wood out of there? I'm thinking I'm going to, I think I'm going to use a chainsaw. And that's going to be, going to have to really be careful that I don't screw it up though. If I get going down through that piece of wood at an angle or something, I, I could mess up my, uh, mess up my dimensions. The other thing to be concerned about is the uh, sap wood. You see here how it's lighter here on the edge next to the bark? That's the sap wood. We don't want to use sap wood. So I think at least on this side you can really see where the sap wood comes around. So you see here that I'm getting inside that to where I'm actually in the heart, heart of the tree. On the other side over here the sapwood's really thin, and it's really hard to see coming around here, but the way I know that it's thin is because down here, see, you can see it coming up here. So it's, it's maybe a half inch wide there, so I know it's not very much here, but you can see that I'm well inside that uh, the way I've got it marked. So I haven't really decided completely. I may try to figure out a way to run this through the table saw 
Maybe if I take and lop off this end over here, and then I might be flat enough, but I don't think my blade's gonna extend up high enough to get me. I don't know. I have to think about it a little bit. All right, more in a little bit. Okay, I started with the chainsaw, and uh, I took off that edge with the chainsaw, and I got a pretty fair uh, cut, but you can see that I couldn't stay anywhere close to the line, but at least I cut outside it. Then I started the other side with the chainsaw, and I was getting really close because it, it was down here, this part. And uh, then the chain was really dull, and it started raining, and I just felt like I was really struggling and not getting a very accurate cut, so I came to the bandsaw, and uh, you can see here how rough that cut is where the chain was going through it, but then when I ran it through the bandsaw, that uh, gave me a nice, smooth cut. So um, at least... Um, at least on that side, and you can sure see the difference. We've got that. Now I think I think I've at least got a flat enough edge. I can either run it back through the bandsaw here or take it to the table saw and run it through there. So um, we're gonna get this figured out. Well, sometimes you think you got a plan and then it doesn't work out. And this is a bit of a frustration. I've cut some of this with the chainsaw, some with the bandsaw, some here on the table saw. And I'm getting my dimensions about right, and just about the time I'm doing that, I start looking here. And see this check in here? Well, it goes all the way through, all the way up into here. I should have known, I should have seen this little notch in here. Um, and, and this is maybe 10 inches, I can't just cut it off. I need 9 inches. So a nice piece of wood, but it's not going to work. And then the more I look at it, there's another one that comes back up like this. So, I'm not going to use it. I just can't. So, anyway, so I started looking around to see what else I have. And so I found this. And this is, this is another piece out of the tree. And most of the sapwood's cut off of here. It is two inches thick. It's got a bit of a bow to it. Um, but it's not nine inches. It's like eight. So that's not going to work. So I had this other one. And this one, uh, I've actually been using to hold the garage door up, and it's got a little tiny check right there, but I don't think it goes very far, just looking here. And this is about, oh, I don't know, at least a foot, and I've got plenty here where I can get two inches out of this. And in fact, I could, this is about 10 or 12 inches across here, I think I could actually get two out of here. So I think I will cut one, and this should go through the table saw easy. I don't know why I didn't think to use this one at first. Um, so, anyway, I think this may be our piece. I'd love to use something out of the tree. I've been doing that as much as I can on, on this boat. But if that doesn't work, um, I've got two other pieces that are about uh, an inch to an inch and a quarter thick that I can laminate. And the, it's, um, it's just lumber that I bought, white oak. It'll work. It gets bolted through down to the um, number eight floor timber anyway, and I can run dowel rod through it or screws or whatever. So I could hold it together. But I'm going to try to use this and see what happens. So anyway, we'll run this through the saw and, and uh, see how it goes. And there we have it. So that piece came out of that, that uh, this piece of oak that's been holding the garage door up. Um, great dimensions. No checking in here. Uh, I like even the way the grain is on here. Um, I can smooth that down. It's just weathered a little bit. Uh, I'm about nine and a quarter inches this way, right at two inches thick. And I'm about four and maybe a sixteenth wide. This is perfect. So 
Uh, we'll need to dig out a, a spot where the mast fits in, and I'm going to have to look at the plans and see exactly how that goes. But uh, I think we've got a real nice, solid piece of white oak that we're going to be able to use for this. So if at first you don't succeed, 